Alone in the Dark. You know, this is another game that I enjoyed playing multiple times over my life. And I do believe it is all linked to its origins and possibly even my first time playing it. Now, you have to understand that this game came out in the early 90s and I was only in high school at the time so I never got a chance to play it at that time. I had read about magazines and all that but never got to actually play the game. I didn't get exposed to it really until my sophomore year in college. A couple of guys on the hall I lived on at my college had a bunch of demo games and they were intrigued by the Alone in the Dark demo. Now if you ever saw that demo is basically you walk through the mansion with its introduction sequence and then you must endure being in the attic. So basically you do what you can to keep yourself from being killed and but you can't leave the attic. Now, of course, we all found this interesting, you know. How do you avoid the, the demon chicken that pops in through the window? How do you keep all those zombies from appearing? Well, we had to solve it. But we were a little bit disappointed that we were just stuck in that room. Guess nobody, I don't know if anybody figured it was just a demo or what. <clears throat> Now, shortly at this year was the first time my computer had a CD-ROM drive. So I looked into getting a copy of it. I still have the copy of the CD to this day, and it was it is a very beautiful and landmark achievement. Now, its graphics look dated today, but at the time they were way ahead of themselves. First off, Alone in the Dark has such a big point in history, and some people forget it is the quintessential progenitor of the survival horror. Now, inspired by the works of Lovecraft, which in early days when we still didn't necessarily appreciate Lovecraft's impact on literature. Uh, some shows and TV shows and later on games would use Lovecraft as a fallback for inspiration for stories and that. But Alone in the Dark really did some justice to it. Now, as I said, the graphics are a bit dated, uh, but you can tell what you can interact with better as well as things you can pick up because they look different than everything else. Pretty much all of the rooms, locations in the first Alone in the Dark, and it's confined to the inside of this mansion are hand painted. Basically, they are perspective drawings and all that in a two, with a 2D look, but your characters are polygonal 3D. Now, they were doing this long before games like Tomb Raider came about. So they were really on the cutting edge of this stuff. And there's, I mean, other games hadn't taken a 3D route yet. Even Sierra was doing, wasn't a 3D model until its later years. But this was a very spooky game. You fought zombies, you fought monsters, 
And you find out, like, through the lore of the game, you see there is the Lovecraftian influence, and he's even credited as an inspiration. So, years later, when I finally got a chance to play it, I was, you know, looking around to get all the games in the series. Which, they, they pumped them out, the first three games, relatively quickly. But each game sort of fell into a different line. But Alone in the Dark was pure Lovecraftian. And it's inspiration, even mentioning things Lovecraft related. It was true survival horror, as you all you started with the limited. You didn't even start with a weapon. You had to find one. You have to find your weapons. Thankfully, there's weapons in the place. You have to get things to keep your health up. You have to think things out and this is a game that it was also in that more unforgiving era except this you know you could save your game and if you messed up you could just restore it although you only had six save slots that was a hardware limitation of the time but you start from the top of the mansion and work your way down Discovering more and more about Derseto, the mansion it takes place in. And it was also a game that allowed you to pick your lead. Although, you had two choices. You had Edward Carnby and Emily Hartwood. Edward would eventually become the face of the series. A uh, detective who specialized in the occult. Who earned the nickname the reptile I don't know if that's ever fully explained in that if you get it now I'm I'm guessing that when it first came out there was the option of CD or three and a half floppy disks because five and a quarter were being phased out at that point But the five and a quarter, I mean, when they put CD, when you read the texts and that, you actually get narration of what you're reading. Which is, that's a plus in my book. It, it brings you more into it. And playing this game was actually very fun. And it, it I had a love for the series. And... Eventually, when they released a new nightmare, I only got that on Game Boy Color. But I've always loved the series, and you know, it it it, it gained a love for me for Alone in the Dark. And I can see why so many of the later survival horror games took elements from Alone in the Dark. I mean, you have a limited inventory which is not you don't know how much you can carry but certain things that are heavier than other things you can't carry them if you're carrying a bunch of other things you have to use your brain as well when you're finding these creatures and sometimes you don't know if you're screwing yourself over later until the time comes that you need something and oh crap I ruined it it was a brilliant game in my opinion now yes it hasn't aged well over the years especially when you look at how the graphics were designed at the time but you also have to look at it at the time I mean you already had an idea of what you could touch what you couldn't touch what you could interact with, what you couldn't interact with because the things you could interact with were in a polygonal sense well, the stuff you couldn't really interact with or had no big impact were basically looked like parts of the drawing. And you always had to be careful when playing this game. You cannot, you could not make, if you make mistakes, you pay for them later. You, I, you have to shoot a portrait in one hallway from the far end if you you have three shots to do it with 
because you can only use one particular weapon. And failure to do so, well, you're dead. It was a game that required thinking and sometimes if you couldn't think that hard you had to get a guidebook. But it was an interesting entry into the into the library of computer games because it was what it was. And uh, I believe it got marketed by infograms. I think they've marketed a bunch of other games too. But Alone in the Dark will always stand out as a very good game to me. And when I picked it up, it also came with a mini game called Jack in the Dark. Now Jack in the Dark was a short little game set around Halloween in which the spirit of one-eyed Jack, somehow possessing a jack-in-the-box or modeled into a jack-in-the-box, something linked to it, or maybe it was an offshoot of one-eyed Jack, basically kidnaps Santa and uh, you must help Little Gray Saunders rescue Santa. Which was, it's a short game and easy to complete in a half hour's time once you learn everything you have to do. But it, it does revolve around a lot of thinking, a lot of experimenting even. It's easy to go through a game of Alone in the Dark and make a mistake and not realize you made a mistake till later. And it is a true survival horror. And it's what started the survival horror genre. Jack in the Dark was a cute little way to introduce the another character into the series who played a key part in the sequel game and they do a good job of keeping the games period specific the original Lone in the Dark and its two sequel games were set in the 1920s so you have to you have a lot of things that were very period specific for those times and in some ways that could probably require an extra bit of thinking on your part. But it's a good game. I do recommend people try it at least once in their lives. Although in some ways to get a true experience you play through it. You play the game as Edward Carnby and you play through the game as Emily Hartwood. Each have their pluses, each have their minuses. but it's an interesting little aspect of the game. I think it's one of the first that really did allow you to pick between a male protagonist and a female protagonist. The story doesn't really change except for their reason for being at Derseto. Which for Carnby, he's looking into a piano that some client wants to get from the ma from the mansion. Emily, she wants to know what the hell happened to her uncle who was the former owner. So each one has a different reason for being there. And the story that you find out and everything including backstory of Dersetto and everything. It's a very it is a very interesting story. Of course, if you when you play through the game you succeed, you find out, you know, you, you get led into a little bit into the next one. But it's a brilliant game. It had a good little mix of Lovecraft elements in there which if you were unfamiliar with Lovecraft which probably a good some gamers were unfamiliar with it it's a, it's a way to slowly ease your way into Lovecraft's works because they have some creatures in there uh, the Night Gaunts and 
the and the deep ones. Although if you read through, it says all the it, it, it implies all the creatures in the game were from Lovecraftian lore, but I'm a little un, unsure of that one at this moment. Ice, you very you had. Well, I think they said there were dimensional shamblers, but some people call them ghosts, which could be true too. I'm not entirely sure, but it's a fun game. It's an experience. It involves shooting creatures. It involves thinking things out because you do have to think things out, especially if you don't know where you're going to find ammo and you don't want to run out of ammo, which is important. But it's, like I said, it's a fun game. I recommend you try it. I'm glad I play it for the channel on here. I wish I could say it had more of an impact on my life, but other than a fun game and yes being able to reference it in a paper for at college as showing how, how games evolved and with the changing of technology and technology some also getting inspired by the budding community of the gamer you know it was it's a, a fun game it's an interesting game it had a slight impact which caught my eye until next time, this is Rich Kale here on YouTube, Rich Gen X Elsewhere, inviting you to subscribe to the channel and check out all that's on the channel. And I hope you enjoyed this little retrospective on the game of Alone in the Dark. Goodbye.